Hello all, welcome to part one of Frame Academy Project 2. Before we dive right in, I just want to go over a few quick setup things. Uh, first, you can click the button on the top left to uh, get a quick link to the online community where you can ask questions or share ideas, also see the frame gallery, and also see the different parts uh, of the project. I do encourage you to go in order though. Um, second, you're welcome to use the project that you started uh, in Project 1, the website you started building there. But if you'd like to start from scratch, um, down here in the website, you'll see a Start Your Own Project on Glitch button. When you click this, that'll make a fresh new project for you, and you can begin writing your HTML right in the index.html file. For those that are new to Glitch, this is actually a full uh, website that you're creating with this, and you can see your website just by pressing this Show Live button. Okay, and you're good to go. Whenever you want, um, you can always remix the code samples that you see on the page, uh, or you can simply copy and paste the code that you see into your own project. So what I've done initially is just um, made a little starter project here, and you could just copy and paste this into your own Glitch project. Okay, oops, click that button there, I didn't mean to. That's okay. So we're ready to begin. Um, this is the project, as I said, that I'm starting off with. I've got a 3D model in the scene, and I've got a photosphere set as the sky. Now, a quick recap uh, about some concepts. So in project one, right, we learned the basics of HTML. We learned that HTML documents are made up of elements, and HTML elements have an opening tag, like this one here, see this head tag, and a closing tag, right? which looks the same as the opening tag, but it has a little slash uh, before the name of it. So HTML elements, they've got uh, an opening tag and a closing tag. You can put elements inside of other elements, like how this script element is inside of my head element, it's sandwiched in between the opening and closing tags. <coughs> Excuse me. We also learned about HTML attributes. If you want to modify an HTML element, you can put attributes in their opening tag. So you see here, my script element has a source attribute. Uh, to define an attribute, just say equals, and then put the value in quotation marks. Okay. You'll see my GLTF model uh, element has a few different attributes. It's got source, it's also got position, it's got rotation, it's got scale. Okay. Now I'm going to introduce a new concept that is going to just become fundamental to uh, your future <laughs> as an A-frame uh, web VR developer, and this concept is called uh, components. Now we've actually already been using components, even though we weren't using that word for it. So things like position, rotation, and scale, these are actually all A-frame components. A reminder, A-Frame is the development framework that we're using. It's some of the magic going on behind the scenes that turns our HTML into an immersive website. So A-Frame uses components, and these are all uh, A-Frame components. And you put components on your entities by using something you already know, right? HTML attributes. So you've already been using components, now you're just learning kind of the word for it. Okay. Now, just by using A-Frame, you actually have access to tons of components, right? We've already been using a few of them, as I said, position, rotation, scale, so forth, but there are so many more. You can find all of these awesome components by checking out the A-Frame documentation. I've got a link right here you can click on, and it's aframe.io slash docs. Um, documentation is just the term for, it's kind of like the user guide, it's like a manual for uh, code or a code library like A-Frame. If you go to the documentation and you look in this little side navigation bar, you can scroll down till you see components. And here are all of the components that just simply come with A-Frame. Um, you'll see some familiar things, right? Here's position, uh, here's scale, and here is rotation. But as you can see, there's so much more. Uh, and in future courses, future projects, we'll look at more of them. Um, for each of these, you can click on them, and they will give you a little example of how it's used. They'll tell you a bit about it, and they'll tell you all of the possible ways you can kind of 
customize or configure that component. So, you know, position is pretty simple. It can only take this certain kind of value, right? These three numbers, uh, the X, Y, and Z position values. Um, but other components are a bit more complicated, right? If you look at the text component, um, you'll see that there are lots of different properties that you can set uh, on it. In any case, though, uh, part of this project is not just learning about animations, but it's really learning about um, you know, how to navigate this documentation and about this concept of components. So they're really important. So already out of the gate, just by exploring this, you'll see there are tons of possibilities for kind of ready-made uh, components, chunks of code that you can just bring right into your project. Okay, so I encourage you to explore uh, the documentation a bit now that you uh, know how to find the components. Now, our 3D model that's in my starter scene, it's static right now. Uh, nothing's moving. There's water, it's not moving around, and there's supposed to be wind that's blowing around some leaves. But it's just static right now, which is sad. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to show you how to play an animation that is already built into a 3D model. Now, I found this model on Sketchfab, and we're going to look specifically about um, how to bring models from Sketchfab that have animations already on them. We're going to learn how to play those animations when you bring that model into your scene. In the second part of the project, you'll be writing your own animations, but what this is about is playing animations that others have already made and embedded on their 3D models. Okay, so we need to use a particular component called Animation Mixer. So you might be thinking, okay, I'm going to go find it. I'm checking out the documentation. Da, da, da. Looks like it's in alphabetical order, but it's not there. So what's up with that? Um, where is this Animation Mixer component? So what I'm going to share with you now is something that uh, it might not blow your mind, but it honestly blew my mind the first time I sort of understood it and understood the implications of it. In addition to the components that just come with A-Frame, there's a whole universe of other components out there that developers around the world create and share openly with the world. And eventually, you'll be writing your own components that you can share with the Frame Academy community and the world at large, and of course, use in your projects or sell to someone else if you want. So you're not limited to these components you see listed. They're very powerful, they're awesome, and use them and explore them, but it's not as if that's all that you have available. Okay, So where can you find other A-Frame components that are made by the developer community? Well, they're kind of scattered around, uh, but a lot of them live on a website called GitHub, which is a very popular site for um, sharing your code and updating it and so forth. Um, but to find uh, one handy list of A-Frame components, there's a site called the A-Frame Registry. Go ahead and click it, and it'll pull up this handy little kind of curated collection of A-Frame components. And many of them you will not be able to find in the documentation. Right, these are kind of separate components. And if you look in here uh, and you're scrolling around, eventually you will in fact find Animation Mixer. I'm just going to go ahead and search for it. There we go. Animation Mixer by a fellow named Don McCurdy, who is actually one of the people behind A-Frame itself. So he's very much a pro, very nice guy. He's given me a lot of help when I've been stuck on things in the past. Um, so here we go. We want to open up animation mixer on github okay so go ahead and click this on github button and that will open it up on github now you're going to see a lot of stuff on github pages that doesn't make sense to you just yet and that's okay um, you don't need to understand everything in order to use something <laughs> so one big trick is just don't be intimidated don't be scared by seeing stuff that doesn't quite make sense to you yet See it as just motivation, right? Uh, eventually you'll get there. Like you want to be able to understand everything you see and uh, you can make it that way. Just keep, uh, just keep learning. Okay, now when you scroll down, eventually you'll see a usage section. And you'll see this section on a lot of GitHub pages that have A-Frame components on them like this one. And it's in this usage section that you'll learn how to bring the component into your project. And they give you just a handy little script 
that we can copy and paste right in our head elements. So remember, it's in your head element that you can import um, other code with this script element. We've already done this when we actually brought in the A-frame code itself. Now just right below it, go ahead and paste in um, the script for uh, this animation mixer component. And as soon as you paste that in, now you can use this component. That's just incredibly powerful, right? You just paste it in um, Don McCurdy's uh, animation mixer component, and you're ready to use it right now. Um, I think that's just so cool. So we've pasted it in, and now you think might be thinking, okay, so how do we use it, right? We've imported it, but how do I add it to my model so that it animates? Well, this is very simple, right? And we've, we've actually done this before with position, rotation, and scale. You use HTML attributes. So I'm just going to add the name of the component to my entity as an attribute. It's animation mixer. Oops, we got a space there. So I'm going to put in animation mixer. There I have it. And now when I refresh my page, voila, right? I see the leaves are scattering about, the water is moving, and my animation is playing. Uh, that was just with like a few little lines of code, right? And we've gotten that to work. Okay, now um, for the challenge for this part, I'd like you to play an animation uh, on a 3D model that you have in your scene. But to do this, you need to find a 3D model that has an animation on it, okay? And where I want you to find one is Sketchfab, which we learned about in project one. So if you go to Sketchfab, of course you can explore, you can explore just downloadable models, uh, which I recommend so you don't have to pay for them. And then there's a filter, and you can filter for animated. And you can also search for stuff and then also put that filter on. Um, however you do it, though, you can eventually filter by animated, and that will only show up uh, models with animations. You can also tell that a model has an animation on it because it'll have this little icon um, on it. it. looks like a little film reel or something. So... Uh, there you have it. Um, to actually bring the model into your project, you can look in project one, I believe part three, shows you how to do that. But I hope you uh, have done that already, so this, this won't be unfamiliar to you. So long story short, um, go ahead and find a model with an animation from Sketchfab, bring it into your project, and then add the animation mixer component to it once you bring the uh, animation mixer component script into your head. Go ahead and add the component to your model and then test it to make sure that it's working. All right. Let me know uh, if something goes wrong in the online uh, community. We've got some people on there already that are helping each other out. So it's a fun and casual place to, to get help. Okay, I will see you in part two.